Gamers, today we are going to do a guide for water finally. Okay, I've been I've been a little busy with tournaments, but we're finally here. Right now in the map pool, I don't know when you're watching this, but right now in the map pool, the two uh, water maps are Baltic and Four Lakes, and this works for both of those maps. Now, um, I do want to say things might change in the future. So what I decided to do, there's 10 civilizations in the game. I didn't want to create multiple videos for each civ, how to play them on water. So instead what I did is I created uh, basically, you know, this video I'm about to create for five different civilizations. So there you're going to see five different build orders and the civs that I'm going to be showing you are English, Abbasid, HRE, China and Rus, which are five best water map civs. They're the best civs for Baltic, but they're also pretty much the best civs for uh, Four Lakes as well, for like Boulder Bay and stuff like that. Those civs are usually the ones picked. And the reason I didn't go for, you know, making guide for French or Malians or whatever, because those civs are not played as much because they're not as good. But even if you played those civs on water maps, you can kind of get how to play water from this video. So with that being said, I'm going to be showing you English first. So this is played against an AI. And I'm also going to be talking about a little bit about water combat in the end, how to do it properly. Uh, but mainly I'm going to show you the small differences in the build order with each sieve and what the sieve that I'm showing you strength is, like why you should play it on water and, and what it's good for and so on. So I'm going to be showing you English first and no matter what sieve you play, the first thing you're going to do is send five villagers on wood and you're going to send one on the water to build a dock with your scout. Why your scout? Because you want to see where the deep water fish is. Sometimes I see people just build a dock and the deep water fish is like here. So get your scout to the water so you can actually see where the deep deep uh, fish is so you can build a dock closest to it. And also do not, dis do not build a dock here, destroying both of these fishes. Try to build a dock so that like this, so that you have uh, you know, at least one shoreline, but maybe even two shoreline fish around it so that your villager can gather food there. So this guy is gonna stay there and gather fish. Now, when you have, um, you put these five villagers on wood and you wanna chop first the three uh, trees around your base and then you wanna go on the tree line. So you do not open with lumber camp. You always open like this. The next three villagers coming out of TC will be going on food. And then three after will be going on wood for a total of eight on wood. Okay. I'm going to put this up so you guys can see the worker splits. And the very first villager that comes out of town center will also build a house. Make sure to not build a house on the tree because you're going to destroy it. So that's very important. So... Once the dock is up, you see we have enough resources for a fishing ship immediately. And there we go. The third villager will also go on food. So you want to have four villagers on food total. So three on the sheep and then one is on the shoreline fish. These guys are going to keep chopping through the trees. And now I'm going to rally three extra on the wood. And that's going to enable us to basically have enough wood to produce fishing ships, but also build houses, build mining camps, lumber camps, whatever else we need. Okay, so there we go. Seven, eight, and now I'm going to go build a lumber camp and start chopping uh, this wood. And when these guys finish, they're going to join uh, on the bottom side. And as you can see, fishing is still going. Now, with the, what is this, 16th villager that comes out, I'm going to be rallying onto the gold. Now this is the tricky part in the build, I would say. So you see, I don't have quite enough wood. Okay, so pay attention. The, the, I don't have enough wood for fishing ship. I'm about to have. Uh, it's because the villagers are transitioning to this tree line. So they gotta chomp down the trees and it takes a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna build a mining camp immediately. I'm going to build another fishing ship. Then this villager is mining. So he's not wasting his time. He's doing what he's supposed to. And then and when I have 50 wood, I'm going to build a house first. And then the next villager that comes will do the same thing. But I'm going to queue a fishing ship first. And then he's going to build a mining camp. Now, you can't skip a fishing ship if this is like too complicated to do. Uh, but you are going to have one fishing ship less, which is quite a lot of economy. So, 
So you can see I'm building a mining camp and I think uh, in a second I'm gonna drop off enough wood. Um, I actually built a mining camp first. Um, I get supply block but not really because yeah. And then um, I will have wood in a short second and then I can start my fishing ship. Now we want a total of four villagers on gold. And the reason why we want four is if you look at food, it's going to time out nicely uh, for us to age up. The villagers on sheep are still there, the first three that I have, and we're going to use those three to build a landmark. So this guy is still on the shoreline because we want to build multiple docks after. And there we go. So we got four on gold. Now we're going to rally everything onto the wood. And I pulled another one from the wood line because we want four uh, aging up. Now, building another house, I'm building more fishing ships, and soon I'm gonna build another dock because you wanna have two docks when you hit fuel so you can actually produce properly. Uh, I like to go to 10 fishing ships, uh, usually with English. You can go for eight and then cut production and save up wood so when you age up, you can instantly build two ships. That's fine, but I like to go for 10, a little bit of a more economic approach and then stay a little bit more defensive, but you have a little bit of extra economy. As we're aging up, the goal that we're gonna be using is immediately getting double broad axe and we're going to be building a mill for wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow and double broad axe are incredibly important on water maps because you're gonna have over 20 villagers on wood, so double broad axe is just a no-brainer, but also wheelbarrow, because all this running back and forth will help you a lot with, um, you know, improving your wood income. Now, um, as you can see, I'm going to build another, another lumber camp. I don't want the lumber camps to be too far away. And the when these guys finish the landmark, I'm also going to be sending them onto the wood. And I'm just rallying all the villagers onto the wood. Four and gold, another dock. And right now I have 10 fishing ships, like I said. So the moment I age up, I will not have enough resources for double ship. That's because I went for extra one or two fishing ships. Um, but you will be able to defend any kind of push. So I'm aging up around 530-ish. Now, this is how you play English and water. And this is the builder for English and water. Now, what's the strength of English and water? The strength of English and water are multiple, three things, really. Um, uh, first thing is, you have this upgrade, um, Admiralty which is very expensive, but it's very strong, and it's probably the best unique uh, water upgrade in the game. So what it does is increases your combat ship's range by one. This might not seem like a lot, but this is very noticeable in fights. Very, very, very noticeable in fights. So this is a very uh, a big upgrade to get, and like I said, it's the best water upgrade for Feudal out of any Civ to, to get. That's number one, why English is gonna water. Number two, if you look, their fishing ships cost 67. They don't cost 75. That's because English ships, all of them cost 10% less. Okay, so they're 10% cheaper. So if you look, galley is 81, 135, and then hulk is 108, 180, 27. So that's 10%, obviously, if you look at it, you know, that way, every 10 ships, you get a ship for free, or I guess nine ships. Um, so that's just kind of like a passive bonus that's that's pretty good. Um, and then the third thing that makes English really good on water is the council hall and the barracks. So as I was aging up, there is another thing that you could do. Instead of having 10 fishing ships, you could have left at 8 and you can actually proxy, which is building a, a barracks on the opposite side of the map, like here, and then you can make men-at-arms even before you finish aging up and then harass enemy wood lines. So that's one thing you can do. Second thing you can do is the moment council hall finishes, you don't want to build 20 longboats because you still want to make fishing ship or uh, ships, right, on water. But what you can do is you can make two longboats, two, three longboats, and you just send them across the map and if the opponent is going for, for water as well, he's going to need wood. So you just put your two, three longboats here and you start harassing the wood lines and by doing that, even though you invested into longbows, you're gonna deny wood from the opponent, so you will actually come out ahead on water, okay? So that's another thing you can do, and this is something that either barracks or longbows is something that you should 100% do if you play English. That's the whole point of English on water, that's the strength of it. 
So then you're forcing your opponent to make a, a stable, then make horsemen in order to defend your two longbow, and you're not committing to it. That's kind of the, the, the thinking process behind English and why you play English in water. Also, if you get harassed here, you can always use, you know, little short bows from the villagers to, um, to shoot at the enemies. But in general, that's it. So English strength is not so much economy in water, it's being able to be aggressive and the unique upgrade that gives them uh, plus one range. So with that being said, from this point on, what you want to do with English or any other Civ, uh, you want to make sure you open with Hulk first, because sometimes the opponent will go for archer ships and try to harass your fishing ships, so Hulk will defend archer ships, it will defend other Hulks, and if the opponent goes for Insta Demo Ship, the Demo Ship does not one-shot a Hulk or a Springle Ship, so you can just repair it up. So Hulk is like the safer version, if you notice with your scout that your opponent is like halfway through age up, this is not only for English but for every Civ, if they're halfway through age up, you can open with an archer ship because they produce faster and they move faster so you can go and harass the enemy fishing. Now, after this I'm just gonna go through builds and variations for different Civs, I'm not gonna re-explain like these kind of basic things for, you know, every time I do this. Um, but another thing is, uh, sometimes People ask me, is it worth to go water? Yes, it's always worth to go water because not only the gathering rate for ships is higher than villagers on sheep, but you should look at these docks like town centers. So instead of making a town center in feudal, you can make a town center in dark age. So your economy scales much, much better and much, much harder. So what do you do if your opponent did not go water? Well, you're gonna make two, three galleys. You're gonna put them on patrol along the shoreline. So maybe like one here, one here, and then one maybe defensive, and you're gonna produce fishing ships more and more and more and scale your economy while making as many units as possible on land. And because you have so many fishing ships, you can put all your villagers on woodline and you will be able to make way more, way, way, way more units on land. Even though your opponent is full land and you're water and land, you will have more economy and more units. So that's why you kinda have to go water. Now, what do you do if the opponent is water? Well, you have to fight over control on water. So that means you want to have um, the most, uh, out of the three units, demo ship, springle ship, and archer ship. You want to have springle ship uh, the most. You want to have few archer ships, which are, for English, it's called galley, uh, to snipe the enemy demo ships. So galleys counter demo ships. Demo ships counter Springle ships, Springle ships counter Archer ships. So I would suggest watching some pro games, but you'll always see pro players try to snipe Archer ships with Springle ships, snipe Demo ships with Archer ships, and snipe these Springle ships with Demo ships. So it's kind of like a dance. It's basically like Spearman, Archer, Horseman on land, except on, um, on water. And you should only go for demo ships if the opponent is either like pure Springle ships early on and you can maybe get a connection, or later on when you have much more economy and you can produce multiple demo ships at the same time. In general, good rule of thumb is to have about 30 villagers on wood and then rally, 28-30 uh, is fine on wood, and then rally some more on gold so that you can produce uh, demo ships from then on out. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention, pretty much with any sieve, the moment you age up, you will want to get double broadaxe immediately. That's the first thing you get. And you will build a mill so you can get wheelbarrow as well. Boom. I'm gonna get wheelbarrow right there. And these two upgrades are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important. So, from here on out, you can see I got double dock. Now, like I said, English economy, you can see it's slacking a little bit on the production, but English economy is not the best water economy. They have strength in military but not the best eco. So, uh, that doesn't mean they're bad Sith, it just means that that's kind of their, their strength. So, you keep the four on gold, and once you get about 28, 28, 30 on wood, you will rally more villagers onto the gold, so you can support more demo ships. Now, that's English. Uh, I kind of gave you guys a, a little guide how to, basically why you get stuff, how to play English, and in general water stuff. So now I'm not going to repeat all these things for every sieve. I'm just going to repeat what's unique about this one, Abbasid, and why you do stuff with Abbasid, and what's 
the strength of Abbasid. So, number one thing with Abbasid, uh, same start, like we did it with English. Again, this is how you start with every sieve. You start five on wood, one to build dock, three on food, and so on. Until I mention otherwise with some sieves. So, Abbasid docks cost 75 wood. They don't cost 150 wood. So, uh, you will see that Abbasid build order is going to be a lot easier than English build order. It's going to be a lot smoother. You're not going to be worrying about if you have wood or not. It's going to be just a lot easier to execute, right? Now, you can see I already have 175 wood. Uh, and my dock hasn't even finished yet. So we're going to build a house. Now, because Abbasid has House of Wisdom, it's very important you connect your buildings. This is very, very important. So you need to think in advance where you're going to place your building. So you can see right here, I'm placing my first house here because I want to build lumber camp and I want to make sure those are connected. So we're going to be producing fishing ships, three on food, and I got one here. And then we're going to rally onto the wood. Now with Abbasid, you're more flexible. So for example, uh, with other sieves, I would still rally onto these wood. Uh, these little trees and then after once the last is chopped you go on to the main wood line But with Abbasid because I have extra um, Wood you will see right here <coughs> Because the dock is cheaper I can just build a lumber camp right now and just kind of make things easier for myself So if you're new to water maps uh, Abbasid builder is probably the easiest one to execute simply because that extra 75 wood gives you so much kind of free uh, uh, just bonus resources to work with and not have to worry as much. We're still gonna go for eight on wood and then we're gonna go four onto the gold. So right now the next villager comes up, let me put this up, um, is going to be building House of Wisdom and you want to build House of Wisdom to either connect the docks with your TC or connect your TC with the gold. So for me uh, the distance between docks and, TC, and um, TC and TC to gold is more or less the same. So I just decided to put House of Wisdom in the back. But for example, if House of Wisdom, or sorry, if the gold vein was here, I would put House of Wisdom here to connect to the docks quicker. And then I would just build another house here to connect to the uh, gold mine. So uh, these guys are still chopping wood. I'm still producing fishing ships. The next villager comes out, will go straight into the gold. And then we're gonna do uh, the same thing that we did with English. I'm building a house right now towards the docks because I want to connect that. And as I'm producing fishing ships, uh, there we go, pretty much consistently, we are going to uh, also make a gold mine. And we're gonna have, this is a little mistake, uh, we're gonna have four on gold. And after this, we're going to rally again all villagers onto the wood line. So why is it important to have your docks connected as fast as possible? Um, the reason why you want to connect as fast as possible is because of the tier one. It's incredibly, incredibly important. So the reason why English is good in water is because of military. The reason why Abbasid is good in water is because cheaper docks and villager gathering rate is plus 15% for all resources. So not only that, but you don't need villagers on age up as Abbasid. So you know those four villagers that idled the whole time by building a landmark? Abbasid doesn't need to do that. So they will have more resources going into um, going into feudal because of it. The moment I age up, or I start aging up, I move the workers from food. And now I have 13 on wood, making another dock, still producing fishing ships. And now there's multiple wings you can go for with Abbasid. You, the only two ones that I would suggest are either culture wing or trade wing. Trade wing will give you free traders, which will basically force your opponent to react to it. So you're kind of going to, with English, you play more aggressive on land. With Abbasid, you play more defensive on land because you have trade going. So not only you'll have like higher economy, but also you will have traders, which is even more economy. So your opponent has to make units. If they don't, I mean, trading is pretty good. So you're going to get a lot of free, uh, free gold out of it. Now, if you look, as I'm building fishing ships, as I'm building another dock, what I'm also going to start doing is building the extra houses because I want to connect them. Uh, I want to connect this ASAP. Even though I don't need supply, I want to connect this immediately 
because I'm going to get 15% extra gathering rate. So right now I have 10 and I actually had to build another house here to connect these. And golden age tier 1 is activated. So now my villagers are getting gathering 15% faster, which is really good. So you can see how economically Abbasid is a lot stronger than English. Now Abbasid doesn't have the potential, you know, you don't, you don't build a military building the moment you age up. Technically you could go for military wing. I would not suggest it. I don't think it's that good. Um, but yeah, you don't get like council hall. You don't have the unique water upgrade. It's really good. Instead of you get this crap, increases the move speed of military ships by 10 in castle age, which is useless. Um, but I do have 11 fishing ships. So I have extra fishing ship compared to English. And I could have probably pushed maybe another fishing ship if I wanted to. Um, I'm building a mill for um, wheelbarrow. And if you look at my resources, if you guys remember, um, with English, I had to actually wait a bit to build a hulk or sprinkle ship for Abbasid and Spagla. I had to wait a bit. With Abbasid, because of the 15% gathering rate and because of extra villagers being on wood, I had 300 wood when I aged up, so not only I could build Bagla, but soon enough I'm going to build a, be able to build Doe, which is the archer ship, uh, as well. And I'm going to get double broadaxe, and soon after I'm going to get uh, the wheelbarrow. The traders are out from the House of Wisdom. I'm instantly sending them to trade, and I'm going to take one villager from the gold, and I'm going to build a market in the corner to make sure we get the full trade. Once the market is done, you're going to redirect your traders to this market and you're going to use this villager to slowly start walling off the sides of the map. So I'm going to wall off here, I'm going to wall off here and then later here so that my trade is not interrupted in any way. And this is not really over committing on defending because again, uh, if English was doing these walls early, that would be really bad because you don't have economy for it. But Abbasid has that extra eco, so you're not shooting yourself in the foot by doing that. And as you can see, we're going to be producing, like I said, um, more units on the water. Double Bagla coming soon. You can add um, more docks. Remember, the docks are cheaper, so that's something you can go for. Uh, as you can see, the walls are going up. And another thing to, um, to, 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 to remind you is you are the defensive civ. Like you're not going to be making, you know, uh, a spearman or a horseman and attacking them on land. That's not how Abbasid is played. If you want to do that, other civs are better for that. What you should do though, is scout your opponent and make sure that they don't have ground military production. So if you, let's say the opponent is Holy Roman Empire. If they have barracks, you have to make something against it. You can't just ignore it because men at arms will arrive in your woodland. <coughs> they will harass your traders. So you need to make something. If they go stables, you go spearmen. If they go men at arms or spearmen, you can go camel archers. Um, so you have to respond to it, but you shouldn't be the one that's aggressive on the land because you already had economic lead with all the eco stuff and the traders um, as well. Can the trader produce traders? No. Uh, you can also get this eventually. I wouldn't suggest rushing it, uh, but you can get it eventually. And I would also not suggest making more traders unless you're losing water and you know you, you can't win water. You just transition to full trade with Abbasid, but your focus should be on the water mainly and only making units on the land when you're getting attacked. But if you go for trade and you go for water, you're going to lose water because you will not have enough economy to sustain, um, you know, fighting ships on the water. And that's it. Uh, that's the opposite. Next one is Holy Roman Empire. So what is the strength of Holy Roman Empire? The Holy Roman Empire strength is pure economy. Now, I do want to say opposite is also pure economy, but in a different way. Why? Because Abbasid economy is you get 15% flat gathering rate for all your villagers. With HRE, you get 40%, but it's on a clock. And 40% is from Chapel, of course. So in this game, I had insane Chapel. This is the best case scenario you can get for water map. So I'm going to put my Chapel here and I'm going to get 40% gathering rate on all these trees. But 
eventually you will run out of tree trees to chop near chapel and then your eco bonus is gone but the abbasid is 15 percent throughout the whole game okay now atery is considered a stronger sieve than abbasid and water because the 40 percent early on is much more important than having economy later on because the thinking the, the thought process is you will be able to overwhelm your opponent with the 40% extra economy, even though in the long run they will have more economy, okay? So, same thing, uh, we're chopping wood, uh, we're getting fishing ship out, and uh, so nothing weird there, right? Pretty, pretty standard stuff. Now, try to put your sheep and your prelate on the side where you're going to be chopping wood. So... For example, my sheep started here. I moved it here because I'm going to be chopping these trees, right? So if my prelate stands here, he can inspire the food villagers and the wood villagers. Which is pretty big. So, again, I'm going to put the um, the worker count above so you can see. And, um, yeah, just chop, chop away. Again, same thing like every other sieve. Building a lumber camp. Same thing like every other sip. Now, one thing I forgot to mention. Another strength of this uh, of this sieve is the fact that your villagers on food will be inspired from the start until this moment. So, because of that, you only need three on food. So, only two on sheep plus one on shoreline fish. Again, the reason for that is these two guys are going to be inspired. So, they're going to have 40%. Um, extra gathering rate on food so you don't need a third villager on sheep so you will basically get eight villagers on wood faster with h3 than with the other sieves and not only that they will also be inspired so uh, usually age up with hre is a lot better as a lot faster than the other sieves because of prelate so um, I already have eight on wood only two on sheep, remember, and the moment I go on the wood line, I'm going to put Prelate there. And after that, I'm going to keep those these two guys on food, one on shoreline fish, and at this point, we have fishing ship, you know, going, so we don't need more on food. Right now, I'm going to be rallying onto the gold until I have five, okay? Because HRE starts with zero gold, so you're going to need to basically not go with four, but go with five uh, instead. Same thing, we're gonna build a house, we're gonna build a mining camp. And you will see we're pumping fishing ships. And again, at this point, your income with wood is very comfortable because of this prelate. You're gonna have plenty of wood to, to build stuff. And you will be able to get a second dock before you even uh, are halfway through age up. I think even before aging up, you're gonna be able to start a second dock because of all this extra income. Now we got five on gold, so we're uh, getting the gold income going, which is very nice. There's the second dock. Look, before the age up, we got a second dock going for more fishing ships. And once we get 200 gold, I'm going to take that one villager. So we're going to leave four, just like with other sieves. We used five, but we're going to leave four. And then we're going to age up with six. Now. Why do you age up with 6 with HRE? Well, this is the reason. The biggest strength of HRE is the inspiration. So, if you have 8 on wood, uh, yeah. one prelate can inspire 8 villagers. You cannot inspire more at the same time. So, the math works out like this. If you age up with 4 and you put a prelate here and you chop wood, you will get less income than if you aged up with 6 and then put prelate inside and inspired all your villagers. Okay, that's how it works. So, we moved all the villagers from food. I left four yes. on gold. And now we're going to age up while still producing fishing ships at the same time. There we go. And again, this chapel is like absolutely insane. This is like best case scenario. Always put your chapel on wood. Do not put your chapel on gold. Always prioritize the wood. Now, if you remember, we had 10 fishing ships when we aged up with English. We had 11 with Abbasid. And we're, we can have, if we want, 12, 13 with Holy Roman Empire. And the age up uh, is also going to be at 540-ish. Boom. Prelate inside. 
and now all these 19 villagers are gathering 40% faster, which is nuts. Double products immediately, and um, you will see the income on wood will just be crazy, crazy good right now. Getting wheelbarrow, getting double products, pretty much <coughs> everything is standard. Now, because of the chapel, uh, you can actually go a little bit earlier on gold compared to other sieves. So like I said earlier, with other sieves, um, you go on 28, 30. With HR, you can probably go on 25, 26, just because your gathering rates are gonna be so much higher and you're just gonna have crazy, crazy, crazy amount of wood. If you look, I have two ships and I'm already producing two more and I have another one in queue. So if you compare the previous two sieves to HRE, you will see that HRE has a lot, lot better economy. Now, another strength of HRE is um, instead of building a third dock, um, I could have built a barracks and harassed the enemy with men at arms in feudal, which is very, very strong and requires quite a big response from your opponent to defend men at arms because they have armor and they're going to be a lot tankier, uh, harassing and a lot more annoying to deal with. And at already seven ish minutes, we have third dock coming up. So, like I said, this is very strong uh, sieve on water and the strength is the chapel and how much you can build early on. But remember, you have to do something before your chapel runs out because after that, you don't have the 40% inspiration on your villagers anymore and you're just a you know regular sieve and you don't have any bonuses on water either. But usually, uh, you know, by... 15th mark the the games in water are usually decided um, So you, you either won the water or you lost the water Yeah, the unique upgrade for HRE sucks. It's a fire stations military ships regenerate one health Every two seconds when out of combat this sucks don't get it. So yeah um, Regarding HRE uh, you can play it on land uh, defensive or offensive like you know by you keep building ships, but you can also make men-at-arms and attack your opponent, or you can just build spears or men-at-arms and defend um, on the land as well. So I would suggest maybe even building one barracks across the map and making some men-at-arms and, and, again, stopping your opponent's uh, uh, wood income. Or you can also go for the opponent's gold income, because if they don't have gold, they can't make demo ships and they can make sprinkle ships which is equally damaging as them not gathering wood. Boom. And by the way, don't get any funny ideas like, "Oh, I'm going to I'm going to skip uh I'm going to skip building fighting ships and I'm just going to go castle." Don't do that. You're going to lose the game, all right? It's not worth it. It's a lot better to just build fighting ships and kill the enemy water than aging up. If you age up, you need to invest so many resources into it. You need to invest the age up resources and then you need to invest resources into upgrading your stuff and you're not gonna have an army. So next one is China. China, what is strength of China? Economy. And you'll see, you, you kind of see a pattern, I'm pretty sure already, which sieves are best on water. Except English, all the sieves that are best on water are sieves that have bonuses for wood uh, or just bonus gathering or bonus whatever because gathering more land gives you more units on water. That's how it works So same thing with China. We're doing the same exact opener now I do want to say China builds 50% faster. I think right it's 50% for defensive structures and 100% for normal structures Pretty sure that's how it works um, so Building this dock is a lot quicker with China. So if you look I finished the dock and I don't even have wood to build it. That's okay, don't panic, that's how it's supposed to be. Like, my 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 villagers didn't even chop through this wood mm -hmm. once and I already have dock finished. Now, this is an interesting thing that you can do with China, okay? Check this out. I'm actually gonna get supply blocked or, or uh, population blocked, whatever you wanna call it, for a little bit. Because I'm gonna drop off the first set of wood and I'm not going to build a house. I'm going to build a fishing ship first. So look what's going to happen. Might look scary, but it's not. Don't worry about it. We're going to go three on wood, three on uh, sorry, three on sheep, one on shoreline, and then eight on wood. So check this. Boom. 
I start my house now, and if you look, I'm 10 out of 10. So I'm, I'm right now supply block, and this fishing ship will not be able to go out. But, basically, the way that economy and math checks out, it's better to do it this way, because, like, I'm still producing villagers in my TC, right? You can still produce while you're population cap. So the only thing that's happening is my fishing ship is gonna be stuck for a little bit but it's better to do this than to build a house first and then fishing ship basically this way your fishing ship will come out sooner because you're building your buildings 100 percent faster look at this one two three four seconds maybe and the fishing ship is out so this fishing ship is the fastest fishing ship out of any civilization because of it because you basically build the dock faster you skip the first house in order to get a fishing ship so your economy starts a lot faster. Now, uh, another bonus that makes China good on water is their docks work 20% faster, which means your fishing ships create 20% faster. So every time you make a fishing ship, it comes out faster, which is more food economy, and your military ships will produce 20% faster, which is pretty good. So we got eight on wood, and the next thing we're gonna do, check this out. We're gonna build one villager, put it on food, and the uh, next one is gonna be rallied onto the food. But after that, we're gonna build Imperial Official. We wanna build Imperial Official as fast as possible while continuously producing villagers. So we don't wanna cut villager production for Imperial Official, but we wanna build it ASAP. Um, why do we want that? Well, we want to supervise the lumber camp. So the uh, workers drop off 20% extra lumber, which is, that's right, why China is strong on water. Because 20% extra resources drop off, plus taxes, plus docks working faster. And as you can see, now they're dropping 12 wood per. So I just got 10 extra wood out of thin air. Um, we're gonna build another house. And then we're gonna build um, a little dock, or sorry, a little gold mine. So we got eight on wood, three on sheep, and now we're gonna build a gold mine. We're only gonna send, I think we still send four, or maybe we send three, I can't remember what I did. Now, whenever this tax gets to 40, you're going to be picking it up with Imperial Official and dropping it off, and then back to supervising the lumber camp. Now, one thing, no, you cannot supervise the docks, nor town centers. So, yeah, I went four on gold, okay. So I'm supervising. Now, one thing to remember, try to be a little bit careful uh, when you decide to pick up taxes. And I'll show you why in a second. So, right now I have 39, so I could pick up taxes now, right? But that would be a mistake because these guys are fresh. This guy has six wood, and these guys are all on six and seven wood. So if he, if I picked up taxes now and dropped them off, I would actually miss on like 10, 15 wood from the bonus drop off. So I just wait until these guys drop. Then I pick up the gold, drop it quickly. I miss two wood here, but that's fine. And then we're back to supervising it. Now, you're gonna have enough for age up. I'm still producing fishing ships the whole time. I haven't even started aging up and I'm about to be on nine fishing ships. We're gonna age up with three and we're gonna go for Imperial Academy. You usually wanna build Imperial Academy, kind of like Chapel from HRE, where the lumber camp is, where the gold mine is, uh, so that you get extra taxes from it. And then we're not going to be building a third house, we're gonna build a village. So, for those that don't know, village costs 125 wood, but gives you population of 40, which is equal to 4 houses, which is equal to 200 wood. Which is another cool thing about China on water. I just saved 40, uh, 75 wood. So, um, <coughs> now the reason you don't need 4 villagers to age up with China is because you already construct faster. So, you know, you don't need to rush it super... Uh, super hardcore. Now you could put four or five on age up and you will age up a lot quicker than your opponent. Look, I'm aging up at like, I started aging up at like 425 or something, 430, um, which is uh, quite nice. So you could rush age up with four or five villagers and then build an archer ship, which is junk for China and harass enemy fishing ships. 
Or you could just play it like this, more standard, you know, not rushing anything, just play it normal and work off of your economy. Now, um, we're still producing fishing ships. I'm gonna build another dock here. And the moment I age up, I'm gonna build another Imperial official because I want him to go around and collect taxes, which is gonna be extra gold income. Getting double broad axe, which is gonna get a uh, research extremely fast because I am uh, supervising. And another good thing about having Imperial Academy next to your lumber camp is you can just boop, boop, boop. You collect the taxes, drop off, supervise without moving at all. So again, we're rallying all the villagers onto the wood line and you're going to keep four on gold. So you're actually gonna have a lot more gold than the other sieves I just showed you and that we just played. Because not only you have foreign gold like other sieves, but you're going to have tax income as well. But that's okay, because you want the wheelbarrow, you want the double broad axe, you want, you know, to make uh, um, spring old ships and demo ships eventually. But another thing that you want that is very strong, and that what makes China one of the best sieves in water, is Barbican and Song Dynasty. So, once, I, once you make Barbican, not only... I mean, if, if this was the map that I was playing, right, against an opponent, if I make a Barbican here, that protects both wood lines. And that's very good against men at arms, it's very good against horsemen. So it would help me quite a lot. But not only that, I would also unlock Song Dynasty, so my villagers would produce in 15 seconds instead of 20, which would mean that I would not only have same or better economy on water than the opponent, but I would also get more villagers on land, which would further improve... Uh, my economy more and more so um, you can see because I aged up faster I went with the junk so you can kind of show you like you can just attack with it and then after you can build a war junk which is sprinkle ship for China um, every time you move your lumber camp make sure you move the Imperial official as well and this is where your economy will just like pop off insane amounts and this guy's just gonna go around and collect taxes uh, and just give you extra gold. I'm building a uh, mill. I'm gonna start a wheelbarrow in a second. And another thing that you can do if you want, that's like, you know, min-maxing as much as you can. But when you start wheelbarrow, you can also supervise it until the research is done. So I'm gonna show you right here. So I'm gonna start wheelbarrow. It takes one minute and 25. If you supervise it, it's only 30 seconds. So. And once that's done, you can make him go back to collecting taxes. Can you supervise docks? No, you cannot supervise any economic building. You cannot supervise market or docks or town centers. We should keep making fishing ships when there's no uh, building battleships. Well, if opponent has water, you need to build ships until you destroy his docks, okay? If the opponent has no water, then build one or two archer ships, galleys, junks, whatever they're called for whatever sim. Have them on patrol so you can kill enemy villagers trying to build docks. And then just continue producing fishing ships. Like, if, the if you have water, whether the opponent didn't go for water or you want water, you want to make like 30, 40, 50 fishing ships, okay? That's how it goes. And yeah, from here on out, like I said, those are the strengths of China. You produce 20% faster, you have tax gold, which allows you to make a lot of uh, demo ships, and um, you have Imperial Official, which drops off 20% extra wood, which is obviously literally the resource you need the most. And now the last one, which is Rus. So, um, Rus is um, also one of the best sieves. Uh, I would probably say that the three best sieves in general are Rus, Achery, and China, followed up by Abbasid and English. I don't think Abbasid and English are necessarily worse. It just require maybe a little bit of a different um, approach, right? So, Rus. Uh, obviously, you want to get some sheep with Rus so you can, you know, collect food. But also remember to kill your deer. So what is the strength of Rus? Well, Rus doesn't need to mine gold early on. Uh, because you will get your gold for age up with uh, your scout by killing deer and by killing wolves. 
The same start as the other sips. Now, one thing to note, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with China. I'm not gonna build a house right now. I'm gonna build a fishing ship first and then build a house after. So you can see, I started my Lodia fishing ship. Um, and I think I'm not even gonna get supply blocked for a second. So here we go, I drop off the wood, I build a house, and if you look, it's gonna be very good timing. House finishes, and I'm gonna get my Lodia fishing ship out. Now, what are the strengths of Roos? Well, like I said, you don't need to mine gold early on. Um, your fishing ships are actually the best fishing ships in the game. No second scout? No. Uh, your fishing ships are the best fishing ships in the game because uh, they, they do cost double the price, but they do have higher gathering rate. If you look here, it's crazy. And they don't need to go back to drop off the fishes, which it doesn't matter how many deep water you've gathered, your fishing remains the same. But if you play other sieve, if you consume this deep water, they go here, they got more to travel back and forth. So your economy is a lot better. Now, same thing, we're gonna go up to eight on wood. And now this is the different part compared to the other sieves. Once we have eight on wood, we're not actually gonna rally more onto the wood or the gold, we're gonna rally more onto the food. Why? Because if you look, I already have 240 gold. So I need eight on wood to continuously produce fishing ships, um, but I don't need any gold. So what I want to do now is get as much food as possible so I can age up, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm just rallying onto the uh, food. We're gathering as much food as possible continuing to produce fishing ship. Sometimes you will have moments uh, like around this time where you don't have enough wood, but that's normal, don't panic. Um, it's when you're transitioning to the to this wood line. Now, there's the cheesy version of this build and there's the normal version of this build. You can do whichever one you want. I'm showing the normal version, which is like the normal macro style. And the, the, the cheesy version compared to the normal version is next. So the normal version, you just age up with four and you go Kremlin, uh, you age up with four and you play the game normally. The cheesy version is you take seven of these villagers or maybe you even take eight or nine villagers and you rush Kremlin, you take one fishing ship, you put it here and the moment your age up finishes, you can trans transform your fishing ship into Lodia galley and you can instantly harass your opponent fishing ships now this is very strong and it's very hard to play against but um if it doesn't work you will set yourself uh behind economically so try it see how it works for you but yeah so um we're aging up and the moment you start aging up we're gonna move these villagers uh onto the wood line immediately now what is the strengths of Rus? Well, I, I talked about fishing ships. Kremlin, it's a defensive landmark. It's funny, I got double wood line again. Uh, I hope I get to one of these in a tournament, but uh, Kremlin will be able to defend your woodworkers. Kremlin is quite strong defensively. You will get 20% uh, wood drop off that you would usually get from wooden fortress, so you don't need to build that. You can just build Kremlin and you get 20% extra wood, like China, which is very, very strong. And unlike China, you get instant harass for your opponent. So this is why Rus is strong. It's, it's kind of like mix of English and, and China, where China has more economic advantages, but Rus has Kremlin, which you can make militia, and you can instantly send them to the other side of the map into the enemy wood line. And militia is pretty cheap, and it doesn't require production building for you to make it. Once we age up, we're gonna put these, by the way, when we age up, we're gonna put them on gold. So depending how many animals you manage to kill, you should have enough for double Broadax and uh, a Lodia attack ship. You might not, if you don't, that's fine, don't worry about it. You still get the eco bonus of 20% wood, so you're still doing good. And the moment I aged up, I click this thing, which is 40 food. I made two militia and you instantly send them across the map. 
These guys have expiration time, so you need to make sure they, they go immediately. And you just run them into the enemy wood line. The TC will shoot at you, but that's fine. As long as you do some damage, disrupt some gathering time, they did their job. And whenever the next ticket is available or supply, instantly click it again and send it again. Because they will either have to make a tower or units, and you're not investing into anything. You're not investing into anything, right? So that's the strength of it. On water here, you just continue to make fishing ships. You do want to get hunting cabin eventually. Try to get a, as juicy hunting cabin as possible. This is not that juicy. Would be better if it was like here. Uh, but double broadax is almost done. And I almost uh, have enough gold to get wheelbarrow as well. And like I said, with 20% wood drop off, you're very, very good economically. So again, you don't need 2830 on wood with uh, Rus, just like with uh, China and HRE. You could do with 26-ish, 27, and then rally the villagers onto the gold. And that's pretty much it. Another thing you can do with, H with uh, Rus, sorry, uh, you can also make stables and make knights. So the only other city that can make knights is obviously French, but French is not that good on water. So you can also make knights if you're good with cavalry and use that plus Kremlin to harass uh, your opponent. Now, all these five civs that I just talked about are very good on water. They're the best food on water, uh, a civ on water, sorry. So which one should you play? That depends completely up to you. Uh, I just explained the play styles and I explained the build orders, how to do them, how to execute them. Whichever one you want to play, that's, you know, 100% up to you. If you're English main, obviously, I, I would probably advise you to play English. I don't think English is, like, necessarily worse than other civs. Uh, you just got to play it more aggressively in order to gain advantages. If you are one of the five unfortunate civs that are not played on water too much, which is French, Malian, Ottoman, Delhi, and... Mongols... Uh, you can play them on water, especially if you're lower league, by the way, I just want to say, like, unless you're a conqueror, it won't matter too much, so you can still play Ottoman on water, uh, you can just follow this exact build order, just like I did it with any other Civ, and just play it off of that, yeah, you might miss, uh, you know, an economic bonus or two, but that doesn't mean they're, you know, unplayable. That is the water guide, the ultimate water guide i hope the game doesn't have any major changes where the water has changed completely because this took uh, a little bit of time to play these games and record uh them because i ma managed to mess up a few times but that is it i hope you guys enjoyed the water guide i hope it helped you uh again you stop making military ships whenever you won the water till you win the water keep making them and after that go for fishing ships and once you secure the water, you can also go for the water trade. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something new. I know a lot of people veto water maps because they don't know how to play them. So I hope that you guys, um, you know, learned something new today and maybe are, uh, uh, are brave enough to try water maps now. You're probably going to get some free wins in the first week uh, of this video being released until other people catch up. So, yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, again, thank you so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now. And if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.